Hi, this is Bobby with Grub Mug Concrete. Today we're working out in Danville, Indiana, where we're tearing out this concrete and we're digging a new apron out by the street and pouring new concrete in both spots. We will also be installing a new gravel driveway with number 8 stone. If you like what we're doing on this channel, please hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to help support our channel. So I start off with the jackhammer. Um, our tractor was actually on another job. So I start out jackhammering and uh, we're putting the pieces directly into the dump trailer because we knew it was going to be two loads. Normally I would use a dumpster, um, but it just worked out this time. Uh, there's a landfill right in Danville, so it's no big deal. Um, you can see our ramp system right there and we got rained on. Um, so we went to lunch um, and came back. Everything was all muddy. You can see it's all over Josh. Um, but we just start punching this out, um, getting as much tore out before the tractor gets here. So what he does, he fills up the wheelbarrow and then drives it right up the ramp and dumps it into the back of the dump trailer. Um, we use this system an awful lot. Um, it works out pretty easy as long as you don't fill your wheelbarrows up too much. There I punched a bunch of holes in it um, because I knew the tractor was coming. And then um, my dad is on the tra uh, the, the Kubota Baco and um, he just lifts up the pieces and drops them, throw a piece underneath it and they break up pretty good. That, tr that tractor, um, it's actually a backhoe, but it, it, it has no problem lifting up these pieces. Um, and there's all broken up pretty small. I had to run the jackhammer over a little bit of it, but it was no big deal. And then just scoop it up and load it up into your dump trailer. When you get down to the end, you may have a little bit of hand loading to do. Um, but that goes pretty much with any machine, unless you push up against a wall, but I don't like to do that because I've seen people actually push into a wall and bust the block out in a crawl space one time. So we do as much as we can, um, scooping wise, and then we just throw in the small pieces, but I break them up pretty small so they're easily able to be manhandled. But like I said, for the most part, um, the backhoe can, can load up most of it. We weren't worried about um, making any ruts because we knew we were going to be putting in a new driveway anyway. Um, so there it is. Most of it's all loaded. We just have one more scoop to take out. We tore all this out in one day. And then um, we had to take it to the landfill. Um, this was actually the second load. Um... There you see the landfill. They call it Mount Trashmore. <laughs> That's the nickname we got for it. There's a big hole they got there. Eventually, I guess, going to fill that up with trash and concrete and whatever else, construction waste. Um, it was a pretty cool operation they got going on here um, for a bunch of trash. But um, they had some pretty cool dozers here. And um, whatever that thing is, lifts up semis. But you, you got to wear a hard hat. Like I said, normally we use dumpsters. Um, for the price, I can I could fit four dump trailer loads in one dumpster at least, maybe five. And it's a lot cheaper to go the dumpster route. And you don't have to worry about getting flat tires. There's our first load we dumped out right there. So it's the next morning, 8 a.m. Um, we got to compact what was underneath begin to begin with, and I'm running some string lines. Um... But yeah, I always compact. I compact a whole bunch. Um, you, and then we put, after we get that rough grade on that, then we add our, our uh, reclaim, road base, whatever you want to call it. It's basically like a bunch of uh, ground up concrete. Um, and Josh is setting the height on the string there. And uh, my dad's double checking it with the laser. You always want to um, you always want to have a laser because you can't really rely just on levels. Even if it's an eight foot level, you need to go around and double check everything with your with your uh, laser. They were running all our strings first. You can see we got our boards uh, set out uh, and our pins set out, ready to be formed up. Um, and um, instead of just dumping it in one pile, we we usually if we can we we'll back the trailer around and dump it in a couple of different spots, make it a little easier. And then um, the tractor can spread spread it out a little easier, and the come along guys can can go ahead and uh, knock it around a little easier, and then just being in one pile. I don't know; it's just how we do it. I'm not saying it's right, but it's just how we do it. 
this this uh tractor it, it it works pretty good it's a mid-sized tractor um that Kubota makes um wouldn't be something you'd use for farming or anything but um it's really just a it's like a i mean you could have it i guess around a farm but in indiana i mean we have so many different things out here that we're doing um so it's really nice to have a piece of equipment like this so he's he's basically getting it close and then josh is hitting it with the come along and, and the object is to have it four inches lower than our string lines and our forms that away when you, or three and a half inches so when you compact it goes down to four because most most of your residential concrete you're going to pour it four inches. And there i am setting uh the form up there up against that sidewalk and then um then I'll run it around and put that little box up for that shed to go on and we'll run it around. Um, I always use screws. Um, something I, I used to use double headed nails, but I like screws. They just, they hold so much tighter. Um, yeah, they're a little bit harder to strip, but they just seem to hold. You, we can nail them or we can screw them a little high and then tap it down to our string line and they don't loosen up. Um, and any of you guys that use nails, um, you, I mean, I'm sure you've had them loosen up before. I mean, it's just how, how it goes, especially um, when you start tapping them down. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you guys like screws or if you like uh, double-headed nails better. Um, I'm, I'm, I know everybody likes using screws on steps, but I use screws for pretty much everything. Um, toenails, um, pins, great stakes. Um, I just, I like them. No, I, I have, I mean... I have some double heads, but we just we never even get them out of the shop. So you see, he's compacting this. Um, this is the second time that we've compacted it. We'll, we compact it in lifts, um, which means every three inches we'll, we'll run a compactor on it. Um, sometimes we'll spray some water out there and then run the compactor over it again. And um, that's just that's just I mean the where you get um, most of your strength from your concrete is in the subgrade um and you can see i got my grade stake out there and a board ran across you can see that's four inches exactly so um we yeah, have it where you get your strength in your concrete is in the subgrade yeah you get you get your strength from what you order too but um where you get most of your strength is going to be in your subgrade so basically um you can see that grade stake there but um we use a 4,000 strength mix, um, air, air and trained with fiber. And a lot of times, um, we'll have a wire mesh if it's in a big driveway. Um, we don't really use wire mesh in patios, um, but in driveways, most of the time we'll put it in there. Um, depending on what the customer wants, if they want to pay for it or if they don't, um, fiber is considered a secondary reinforcement. So, um, that's what the concrete companies will tell you. That is a board I put on there so you could see where um, he was digging at. You can see how versatile this machine is. Um, if you've ever used a backhoe on a construction site, you you know how sweet they are. Um, you, so you have the front loader, the bucket, and then you also have this backhoe attachment. There we got a saw cut up against the garage. And then out here on the street, we had to put a saw cut as well. Um, and what I do is I, I run through and I score it an eighth of an inch on top of my chalk line because if you try to cut it and bury your saw blade at first, you'll lose your chalk line and then you'll have to just stop and re-chalk it. So what I do is I zip it through there real quick and then um, I bury it all the way down. And what I mean by burying it is basically this, where your saw, where that middle part of your saw blade is, is touched all the way down to the asphalt or concrete, whatever. Um, that way, when you go to tear it out, it comes out really easily. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll leave that asphalt in there. Um, we'll drive the concrete truck over it so it doesn't break off the street. And um, it, won't, it won't break off the street. So basically, you can drive over it and then take it out when the concrete truck's sitting there after you pour your other part. Again, you can see how versatile this machine is, how it can um, just... It can dig out and um, with that claw, it's kind of like you get a, you get it. This is the third time we compacted it, by the way. Um, 
so you get a um you get the claw basically like a claw bucket and a flat bucket and a backhoe all in one machine um it's just we love it you won't see a lot of guys using them but um maybe that'll change after you guys see this video so this we compacted this down here too um you could never compact it enough is um that's my motto and there's the saw cut right there that we buried and um the gravel truck will bring a load of stone in over the weekend so we had to leave that on there here it is monday morning poor day this is i am i ready mix um reputable company out of indianapolis indiana Again, it's a 4,000 strength air stone with fiber. A little bit of a drag as far as mud goes, but that's no big deal. Um, there's my great stake. What I do is I have a nail sticking out there and a string line I pulled from the garage floor to our form. And I put that nail exactly where the string crossed it, hence a great stake. I float to the, uh, my nail, then I pull that out. And I draw an X, uh, or I think on this one I drew a smiley face. <laughs> that just basically tells people not to walk in it. Then what we do is we cut a cut a grade across from the garage floor to my grade stake. Um, it's called a runner. We call them, some people call them wet, wet grades, I think. Um, we call them runners. And then we'll turn and go the other way. And um, this is just another shot of how we do our wet grades. Then we'll turn. I'll go up there by the garage and we'll go down that little section up there and then we'll come down and go down the other section right there you see then we'll fill up the rest of it um, with mud and we'll strike off all the rest um, when I say strike off some people call it screeding um, I call it striking off but um, it is what it is you call it whatever you want um, but um, we would do have to give and take this a little bit. What's that? What that means is I have to jump in the mud and give Steven some board. He'll reach up there and make sure it's flat. And then I'll reach back to my form to make sure it's flat. You can't go wrong when you do it like this. And then um, the guys in the middle fill the holes on the board. And then the next step is bull float. You can see my bull float sitting up there. That is a um, that bull float's made by Cadillac Concrete Products. It's it's an amazing bull float. I love it. Um, if you haven't checked them out, um, check out Cadillac Concrete Products. It really is a Cadillac. <laughs> I love this bull float, especially pouring out. And then I got another one that I use as a shiner. Um, as it starts hardening up but that one i love as far as pouring out so this is digging it out again um it, when the concrete truck you can see it sitting back there then we compact we throw a little bit of stone in there to get it to where it's about five inches deep um out here by the street and um same process strike it off but you got to float all your edges first so and down by the street um and if this was a complete driveway connected the two, I would have expansion by the street. But since it's free floating out there, um, it didn't need expansion. So you can see that's about a, I would say about a five and a half slump right there. Um, you don't want to pour it any wetter than that. Um, it's just going to weaken your concrete. And I'm all about having strong concrete. <laughs> Some people pour, you see them pouring them at like a 10 slump and, uh, um, or you, I've been on job sites where guys pour it so soupy. It's just crazy. That really, really weakens uh, your concrete. So we have to get this cleaned up uh, off the street and put in the dumper. Um, that's not our dump truck. We had our dump trailer sitting right there. Um, that was the town of Danville. We know them all. Um, four of us on our crew actually went to Danville High School and... Um, so we know everybody when we work in Danville. We uh, go to lunch. We see people we know. Um, when we, you know, we people drive by. The police officers we know drive by. Um, it's kind of weird when you actually um, start doing the right thing in life. How people uh, look at you differently. Uh, so now we're just snapping our our lines for our joints. We use a string line. We snap them where they need to be, 
And uh, this is another Cadillac concrete tool. Um, it's called the laser beam uh, joiner. Um, it, it, it's, you don't even have to cut with the board with this thing. Um, it's amazing. It, it cuts so straight. Um, I used to use a pan joiner, and, and I can cut them straight with just a regular uh, pole joiner. But I love this thing. Um, you can see why uh, here in a minute why I love it so much. So you see it's kind of narrow, and that's okay because um, with your next joiner, it'll, uh, it's a little wider, so it'll, it, it knocks out your lines. Um, the next joiner we use on it is called the Airplane Joiner made by Cadillac Concrete Products. Here it is right here. Um, it's, their joiners are just top of the line. Uh, you can't beat them, especially uh, when you go up to your intersections. Uh, all of them are three-quarter inch deep, so at four-inch concrete, that's about perfect. You know it's going to crack there. And that's what you want. You want it to crack in your joints that you cut, not anywhere uh, anywhere else. You know, concrete's always going to crack. So if you if you put it if you put your joints um, the right size joiners in them um, and put them in the right places, it it should crack right in your joint. That's in, uh, Josh cleaning up the edges, and I put that little extra joint in there because it's a corner. Concrete tends to break off corners as well. And here I am just brooming it. Um, with the lighter of the two brooms we got, um, and then we we clean our broom, shake the water out every time, and I go right to my joint, and then lift it up nice and easy right when I get to my next joint. That way it doesn't burger it up. And then the last thing we got to do is um, spread out this stone for her new driveway. Um, again, this is a number eight stone, and um, the tractor, it gets it close, and then the guys rake it around to where we need it. But um, that's another reason um, we love this machine. So it's kind of like a skid steer in a way because um, it's small. It's kind of like a backhoe in a way because it's got a backhoe attachment on it. And it's um, it's kind of like got a, it's kind of like having a bucket with teeth because you got that claw on the back. And it's also, it works really good for picking up big pieces of concrete too. You can use it, um, you can um, basically hook them and pick them up basically like you got a thumb uh, on your bucket. So this, this really um, set off this job. Um, I put a street sign out by the street. I've gotten a lot of calls from the neighbors and stuff. So when you do good work, um, you're, if you're a concrete guy, your phone should be um, you should have plenty of work. Um, your phone probably rings more than you can even, um, return the calls to do the work. It seems like, uh, but yeah, this real, this really helped this job out. I mean, we recommended doing this and she was so happy. And then now I'm just putting a light coat of sealer on it. It's a, it's a penetrating sealer, um, water-based penetrating sealer. But here's what it looked like before. You know, no concrete here. Uh, old, busted up, cracked up concrete. No pad for the shed. And then here's what it looked like afterwards. Got the apron. Got the approach to the garage and the pad for the shed. I mean, it's just night and day difference. If you like this video, hit that like button. Please help support our channel. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, ring that bell, and then you can show.